As mining companies continue to release second quarter earnings, we have famed geologist Brent Cook joining us today to tell us what he thinks of the results and if he thinks they can survive with lower metal prices. Brent Cook, thanks so much for joining us. Always a pleasure, Daniela. So before we look at specific companies, Brett, both the juniors and the seniors over the past month have moved much lower. Can investors still make money in this sector? Uh, most certainly. The lower they go, the more chances there are to make more money. So I think, yes, being extremely selective in what you buy and looking for companies that can uh, are cash flow positive now and will continue to be cash flow if the gold price drops to $1,000 or less. So with gold companies having released results for the second quarter and some silver companies still left this week, give us your take on the results. What stood out for you? I, I think what, what really stood out is that on the whole, they're still uh, free cash flow positive, most of them. Uh, what that really means is they're doing that by, number one, they're cutting their sustaining costs. And when you think about that, and this is what really is important, is by cutting their sustaining costs, basically they're, they're not sustaining their business. And they're not sustaining their business. Down the road, there's a problem coming up. And that's, I think, what gets really interesting for us speculators in the junior sector. So that's probably the first thing that strikes me. Plus, they've been helped outside of the U.S. with the lower uh, local currencies and the lower energy prices. So that's helped a lot as well. Right. Both, both those, I don't think, are sustainable. Are there certain companies in particular that are stand out for you, Brett? Well, I think, you know, I don't really spend a lot of time on the big producers. What I'm looking for is the smaller companies with projects that the big producers are going to buy. So in that realm, there's two I can think of that are both high-grade vein deposits. One is in uh, Northern Ireland, Dalradian. They've got over a million ounces at 10 grams a ton, another two and a half, grading about the same, a project that looks really good. I've been there a few times. I think it makes money. Uh, the second is a company called Continental Gold with another high-grade vein deposit in Colombia. I've been to that one a couple of times as well. And it's got about four, four and a half million ounces grading around 11 grams a ton and a lot of upside to that. So in my view, those are the types of projects and companies that the majors are going to step in and buy as this problem they've got with not sustaining their business comes to the fore next year or the year after. I'm sensing you're more optimistic this time around, Brett. I'm more optimistic in terms of what I see coming later you know, next year or into the fall, uh, coming years. I still think this year we've got pain to go through. I think there's still mines to be closed. Uh, we could see a lower gold price. Right. But looking further out, they've got to buy these deposits that are uh, very few and far between, and that's where we want to be. Well, on that note, we, know we saw a pop in gold prices today, but some are still talking about $1,000 gold. Uh, could the sector withstand such a drop if that were to occur? It gets tough. It gets tough. At $1,000 or less, most of the main mining companies are in, in serious trouble. Uh, and that's when it gets interesting as well. Um, so, no, I think at $1,000 or less, we've got a real problem in the industry. All right, Brent, thanks so much for your thoughts today. Thank you. And thanks for watching this edition of The Gold Report. We'll see you tomorrow.